The Lost Boy was written a day or two after I wrote home. I don't know what I was drinking that week, but I sure wish I could have bottled it up to take as and when needed during the many creative dry spells I've experienced over the years. While I was working in LA that week, I was reading a book by Dave Eggers called What is the What? A biographical novel about a Sudanese refugee called Valentino Acek Deng and his heart-wrenching journey from South Sudan to the USA. It's a devastating book that I implore you to read. The night I got home to New York after that would-be life-changing LA work trip. I only had a few pages left and was highly invested emotionally, so finished it before going to sleep. There are only two books in my life that have caused me to break down crying on completion. What is the what was the first, and the art of the racing in the rain being the second. I feel pretentious even saying this, but I swear to God it's true. I wrote The Lost Boy in my sleep. It hadn't happened before and hasn't happened since. But that first night home, I woke up around 3 or 4 a.m., consumed by Valentino's story and unable to fall back asleep. I noticed as I lay there a melody and a lyric looping in my head. I will not be commanded, I will not be controlled. I tried to ignore it, but like a good old-fashioned earworm, it was relentless. It was also bizarre. The lyrics were flushing themselves out right in front of me. They rhymed, fit rhythmically, and made total sense. I wasn't doing anything. Three verses in the chorus, all their melodies, chords, and everything. Was this about Valentino? Had I really just written this? I kept trying to think of whose song it was and where I'd heard it before, a common issue for paranoid songwriters like myself. I was delirious and it was the middle of the night, so I grabbed my phone, sang the idea into the audio recorder and frantically typed the lyrics into my notes before I forgot the whole thing. And then I tried to go back to sleep. The following morning, I woke up with no recollection of the events of just hours before. So I got up as usual and made some coffee. I was scrolling through my phone and noticed the note I'd made in the middle of the night. It wasn't a dream it w and it wasn't bad. <laughs> So I quickly made some breakfast and went into my studio slash bedroom to record whatever the hell this was. A couple of hours later, The Lost Boy, as you know it, had been recorded. I must confess that I, I find it difficult to tell a story without covering every single detail. I'm sure it's nauseating for those that know me, but if I did that while trying to explain what happened next, this story could easily be an hour long. So I'll reluctantly give you the highlight reel. Uh, through the powers of fate or whatever, uh, less than a couple of weeks after its creation, on Christmas Eve, I found myself on a stage in the Netherlands playing The Lost Boy for the first time in front of 10,000 people and live on national TV in front of 11 million people during an annual Red Cross charity campaign called Serious Request. While my song sat atop of the country's charts, uh, somehow I'd written a Christmas number one that was helping to raise a lot of money for the very cause I'd written it about. It's painful to leave out so many details surrounding this insane moment, but alas, I'll continue on. Two years after that, I was invited to a charity dinner in Los Angeles that would find me sat next to Valentino Cech Deng, the actual lost boy that inspired the song, and Dave Eggers, the author of the book that inspired the song. For those that don't know, The Lost Boys was a nickname given to thousands of South Sudanese children, displaced or orphaned during the Second Sudanese Civil War, forced to flee their country on foot in search of safety in neighboring countries. Some were eventually resettled in America, including Valentino. During this time, The Lost Boy was also used in a prominent scene in the hit TV show Sons of Anarchy that at the time I'd never heard of. Many people then assumed that I'd written the song about a fictional motorcycle gang member. Despite my enthusiasm for motorcycles, this is not true. To this day, this song and its story is one of my proudest achievements. I left my home still as a child I walked a thousand sorry miles To wait for my father To gather up his tools He said, my boy, you gotta run Don't wait for me, don't wait for mom We'll come get you When it's safe for us to move So I waited many years Held back the pain behind my tears For my father to come find me like he said And in that time I was alone So many years without my own I made brothers of a different kind instead I didn't know just how hard the wind could blow Towards disaster and the things that I would see I never found my father, 
I ain't never found my mother either But I know that in my lifetime I will be A hero to the masses To those born without chances There's a freedom that everyone deserves I know there's greed and there's corruption I've seen death and mass destruction But I'm telling you and I hope that I am heard I will not be commanded I will not be controlled And I will not let my future go on Without the help of my soul I will not be commanded Without the help of my soul